Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be adding some complex numbers written in polar form. We have e to the power 2 pi i over 5 plus e to the power 4 pi i over 5 plus e to the power 6 pi i over 5 plus e to the power 8 pi i over 5. Remember i is the number whose square equals negative 1 and we, by using Euler's formula, we can actually write a complex number in a very compact form. So let's go ahead and talk about Euler's formula first, and then I'll be presenting a couple different methods and approaches. So, first of all, Euler's formula gives us something real nice. So it is e to the power i x. We could also write x as theta. I think it's better if we use theta because that represents the argument or the angle. This is equivalent to cosine theta plus i times sine theta. So instead of writing every time cosine plus i sine something, we can actually write it as an exponential number with i in the exponent. Great, so this is really compact, this is really nice. For example, if you're trying to write i, it can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2, which is kind of nice because we use it to evaluate i to the i or other powers. So how do we handle these kinds of numbers, right? First of all, what is 2 pi over 5? Let's talk about that first. Well, pi represents 180 uh, degrees, pi radians. So pi over 5 would be the same thing as 36 degrees. So when you multiply by 2, you're going to get 72 degrees. So we kind of start off with 72 degrees. So when you think about it, we can basically write this as cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus i times sine of 2 pi over 5. And again, 2 pi over 5 can be written as 72 degrees, so I can write this as cosine 72 plus i sine 72, which is a little more familiar to us uh, because we use degrees more than radians. Well, sometimes. So, then can you find what this number is equivalent to? Because cosine 72 can be evaluated, right? Cosine 72 degrees, I mean, by that. Cosine 72 is uh, easy to evaluate by, well, not that easy, but you can draw a 36, 36, 72 triangle and then cut it like this so that it's isosceles. So it's already isosceles, but you'll make it isosceles again and so on and so forth. But to keep a long story short, I'm going to tell you what it is. Cosine 72 can actually be written as root 5 minus 1 over 4. And again, this can be done in so many different ways, uh, which we'll talk about later. And sine 72 can be found once you find it, but let me tell you what it is. It's the square root of 10 plus 2 root 5 all over 4. Okay, they seem to be unrelated, but they are actually. So are we going to be doing it for every one of these? No, not necessarily, but something to think about. 2 pi over 5 and 8 pi over 5. Let's think about those numbers first. 2 pi over 5 and 8 pi over 5, actually they add up to 10 pi over 5, which is 2 pi. So in other words, they add up to 0, or they're opposites. Therefore, their cosines are equal. So once you find cosine 72 degrees, it will be the same thing as cosine of 288 degrees. But what about sine 288 degrees? That will be the opposite. So knowing one of them actually finds, uh, makes the finding the other ones easier. But if you just go through these values, cosine 72 degrees, as I said earlier, is going to be root 5 minus 1 over 4, cosine 144 degrees, which is 2 times that, is going to be negative root 5 minus 1 over 4, kind of like a conjugate. And then cosine of 216 degrees, which is the 6 pi over 5, that will be negative root 5 minus 1 over 4. Again, these two are equal because they add up to 360, obviously. And you know that cosine is an... Um, what's it called, an even function, and cosine 288 is going to be the same thing as cosine 72. So by finding two values, you are actually finding four values, and then you can go ahead and add these up. What would you get if you add these up? And what would you add them? We'll talk about that in a little bit. But when you add these numbers, you're supposed to be getting negative 1. Great. What happens if you do the same thing for sines? Well, let's see. If you add the sine values, it's not going to give you a negative. And actually, uh, these are opposites, but when you add them all up, you're going to get zero. So this sum is going to be zero, and this sum is going to be negative one. So what is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and take a look. Now remember, we're trying to add the following numbers. Cosine 72, 
plus I sine 72. Cosine 144 plus I sine 144. And then cosine 216. By the way, I'm ignoring the degree symbol, but I hope you forgive me for that. Uh, they're all in degrees. Okay? Cosine 288 plus I sine 288. Now, when you uh, add all these numbers, because that's what we're supposed to do, right? Well, you're basically adding the cosines and sines separately. But this sum gives you negative 1, so that's going to be a negative 1. And this sum is 0, therefore you get 0i, so the whole sum is negative 1. Wow, it was that easy? Well, it took some work, but as you see, uh, the sum is nice. Okay, so let's see if you can approach this problem a little differently because these numbers are very special. Okay, let's see how and why they're special. So when you have something like e to the power 2i pi over 5, I hope you noticed if I raise this number to the fifth power, that gives me e to the power 2 i pi. You could also write it as 2 pi i or i times 2 pi, whatever, but you're going to notice that this is equivalent to 1. 1 is a complex number, but, you know, it's also a real number. So what does that mean? The number inside the parentheses when raised to the fifth power gives us 1, so it must be one of the, be careful about that, one of the fifth roots of 1. One of the fifth roots of 1. Instead of 1, we usually say unity. So if you want, you can replace the 1 with unity, which means 1, basically. So how many fifth roots does unity have? 5. What are they? One of them is this one. The other one is, if you double this, so e to the power 4i pi over 5 is another one. And then if you continue this pattern, e to the 6i pi over 5 is the third one e to the power 8i pi over 5 is another one, and last but not least, e to the power 10i pi over 1, or just 1, is going to be uh, another fifth root. So we're talking about their sum, so let's go ahead and name these something. How about naming this w, then this is going to be w squared, this is going to be w cubed, and this is going to be w to the fourth power. So we're basically looking at this following sum. What is 1 plus w plus w squared plus w cubed plus w to the fourth power? Now let's go ahead and take a look at some formulas, shall we? Yes, the formula we're going to be looking at is actually the formula for geometric series. And here we're taking n to be 5, so we're adding all the way up to include w to the fifth power. So our sum, let's write it one more time, this sum with w being one of the fifth roots of unity, would be equivalent to 1 minus w to the fifth power divided by 1 minus w. But what is w to the fifth power? Well, if w is a fifth root of unity, then its fifth power is going to be 1. Yes, that's what the definition says. So it's going to be 1 minus 1 over 1 minus w, but 1 minus 1, as you know, you should, 0, and this gives us 0, right? Wait a minute. Didn't you just say the answer was negative 1? Yes, but it's without the 1, right? So if you exclude the 1, then the sum is just going to be what? Negative 1, of course, because the whole thing is 0, and this is 1. 1 plus 1 equals 0. Duh! It's negative 1. Therefore, the sum will be negative 1 here. And of course, the whole thing is 0, but we're looking for w plus w squared plus w3 plus w to the fourth power. Okay, so this is one way to look at it, obviously, instead of evaluating all these values. Another way to look at it would be the following. Look it up, right? <laughs> of course, uh, it's, it's not the best method, but uh, at least you do have a calculator that you can use. Okay, so here's another way to approach it, actually. You could also think of it this way. Well, we do know that w to the fifth power is equal to 1, so 1 minus w fifth w to the fifth is zero because w is a fifth root of unity. But then you can factor this, one minus w times one plus w plus w squared plus w to the third plus w to the fourth. And we know that w does not equal one, so we can set this equal to zero, and that gives you the exact same thing, this sum being negative one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.